Hello, everybody. My name is Scott Chaco. I'm the Chief Flight Instructor at the Brampton Flight Center. And so the purpose of today's presentation is just to give you a quick introduction to the Brampton Flight Center itself. And then we're going to go over the process from a licensing perspective of becoming a professional pilot. Now, pilot licensing is extremely complex. So we're going to start and we're going to end with our contact information. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. The top name there, Kathy Stewart, is who you'd want to reach out to if you're interested in any of our college programs. Her email is admissions at bramfly.com, and you can see our number and her extension there. If you're interested in any of our self-paced programs, the best person to reach out to is Amber McKinney. You can see her email is info at bramfly.com, and again, you can see our number and her extension as well. Now, just a quick outline for our presentation. We're going to start off with an overview of the Brampton Flight Center. We're going to move on to the requirements from a licensing perspective, starting off with the um, introductory flight then moving all the way through the commercial licensing process. After that, we're going to touch just briefly on some uh, professional um, programs that we have available at the Brampton Flight Center. So again, just starting off with um, some information about the Brampton Flight Center itself. We've been in operation since 1946, and as things currently stand, you can see here it says 35 plus instructors. At this exact moment, we have 43. The aircraft that we have in our fleet, the vast majority are Cessna, Cessna 172s. However, we're slowly upgrading in terms of avionics, and uh, we do have three twins in our um, fleet as well. We also have two simulators. Okay, moving on just a little bit more about the Brampton Flight Center. So we do own the land in which we find ourselves, so there's really no worry about us selling the land or becoming something else. We are a flying school and that is what we're here to do. We're a non-for-profit organization that is recognized as a private career colleges by the province of Ontario. Other things that we have available at the Brampton Flight Center include on-site maintenance for facilities, uh, fuel line services, and we do have quite a, um, a group of private aircraft owners on the north end of our field as well. Okay, on the field here as well, we do have um, other aviation organizations, including Air Cadets, First Base Solutions, Four Seasons Aviation, private aircraft operators, and the uh, Toronto chapter of the Recreational Aircraft Association. So our airport itself is extremely busy. Okay, so enough about us, but let's move on to the entire process of becoming a professional pilot. The first thing we always recommend, if you are thinking of becoming a, a professional pilot or just doing it as something fun to, uh, to do, is you're gonna start off with an introductory flight. Introduction flights at Brampton are $100 plus HST. Um, it is a requirement for application to any of our professional programs. So just a note there. And really the goal of the introductory flight is for you to go up in a small aircraft for maybe the first time. You're gonna go up with one of our staff, one of our certified flight instructors. And really they're gonna be in charge of the takeoff and the landing. And it's their job to make sure that you get control in between those two points, right? We wanna make sure that you're feeling the sensation, seeing the things you're going to see when you are actually moving on with your flight training. Now, let's say you go on your introductory flight and you realize, you know what, this is for me. It's going to be a, a, something that you want to pursue. The next thing that we recommend is starting the aviation medical process. For any pilot to hold his or her license, it is validated by a certified medical. Now, the medical exams themselves are not overly invasive. However, they do have to be done by what's called a Civil Aviation Medical Examiner, or CAMI. The easiest thing to do is just simply search for CAMI on Google. Uh, it will pop up with a list of all sorts of different CAMIs, and you can just pick the one that's closest to your, your area. Now, when you're calling and booking that appointment, they're going to ask you whether you want a Category 1 or a Category 3 medical. If you're looking towards career as a, uh, excuse me, if you're looking towards aviation as a career opportunity, you're going to want a category one medical. If you're looking to do aviation as just something fun to do, then a category three medical will do. Now, one thing that we do stress is you do want to book this appointment as soon as possible. One of the frustrations that our students run into is just waiting for paperwork in the mail. Unfortunately, the Brampton Flight Center doesn't have any control over your uh, aviation medical. It's just between yourself and Transport Canada, the um, aviation regulator. So again, you'd want to get that done as soon as possible, just so we don't have you sitting on the ground waiting for more paperwork. All right, so let's say you've done your introductory flight, you have uh, done your aviation medical, and you're waiting for it to come in the mail. The next thing is the actual application process. So if you're going to be flying with us from a self-paced perspective, so that is you making your own bookings and you're coming in really at whenever your schedule allows, there is no actual application process. You can just simply contact membership at bramfly.com 
and you can register, become a member with us and start applying right away. If you are looking to apply to one of our college programs or our IETPL program, which we're going to be touching on later on, the application process runs from January 1st to March 15th, and there is an application process that is on our website. Now, regardless of the path that you choose, there are a number of different paths that you can take to becoming a professional pilot. We're just going to go over kind of the most basic and typical progression. So the typical progression starts off with something called the private pilot's license or your PPL. Whether you're looking for something fun to do in aviation or if you're looking towards aviation as a career, the first step is going to be that private pilot's license. After that, you're going to start working towards what's called the commercial pilot's license. Now, you do need a private before pursuing a commercial. However, once you do hold that commercial, it is the first license that you need to hold if you want to work for hire as a pilot, i.e. if you want to be a professional pilot, this is the minimum level of license that you must hold. Now, in aviation, there are licenses and there are ratings. Now, ratings are extra privileges that can be attached to your license. So the two that you're going to want to see for the most part, if you're working towards a career in aviation, the two that you must attain is something called a multi-engine rating, which as the name suggests, means that you will now be able to fly an aircraft with more than one engine. And then the other one is called the instrument rating. The instrument rating allows you to fly in more inclement weather. Put those two together and they're often called the multi-engine instrument rating or the MIFR. Now at that point, if you held a commercial pilot's license and a multi-IFR, you would enter the aviation industry and start building hours. Traditionally, you would build uh, up to 1,500 hours, and then you would write a couple more exams that are at, the, um, at uh, Transport Canada, and then you would have uh, something called an airline transport pilot's license. That is the top level of aviation licensing in Canada. Just a note here, two, three, and four can be done simultaneously. So regardless, your first step is gonna be the private um, license, but then you can work on your ratings and your CPL at the same time. Okay, as we were touching on earlier, there are a number of different options that you can take when you're moving forward with flight training. We're gonna talk about the ones that we offer here at Brampton. So here at Brampton, we offer a self-paced private and commercial program. We're gonna to be touching on that first. We do offer a college program. And then on top of that college program, we do offer something called the IATPL. We're gonna to be touching on the, those last two in just a moment, but we're gonna start off with the self-paced program. So the self praise program is just that. It is based off of your own schedule. It is a recognized certificate program and the requirements for entry, like we were talking about earlier, you can start at any time, but we will need to see that aviation medical pretty soon after you start. Now, just in terms of scheduling, we do have a PPL ground school, which again would be the first step in any self paced training. We do have a PPL ground school that uh, starts every single month. Some highlights from the self-paced program, um, it's roughly 130 hours of uh, ground school instruction by the time you were to finish off the PPL and the CPL. Um, you would also be able to obtain all of the multi and the multi IFR group one instrument ratings as well. And again, the program length is something that we hear over and over and over again in terms of how long is this gonna take us? It is completely up to you. We do have self-paced students that come to us on a full-time basis and we have self-paced students that just come in periodically whenever their schedule allows. Now, in terms of a uh, college program and the IETPL program, so BFC offers a professional pilot program that we call the college program. It's roughly 14 months, although this can be extended for any sorts of uh, reasons. And it's been around for over two decades. And our goal is to start with pilots who essentially have next to no hours and within that 14 month time span, they graduate with a commercial multi IFR rating. Now in recent years, we've been lucky enough that we have, uh, we've added on a integrated airline transport pilots license program, or again, the IATPL. Now you might recall in one of my previous slides, there was that progression of licensing, starting off with the PPL, the CPL, adding on those ratings, then moving on to the IATPL. Now, again, you may recall, previously I mentioned you need 1500 hours to qualify for the ATPL license. Now, in recent years, Transport Canada has allowed certain flight schools to offer an integrated program. So think of it just as an extremely structured and regulated program that allows students to fast track to the ATPL licenses. So it allows them essentially to fast track to that license and fast track subsequently into the industry. The length of this program is, again, roughly 20 months. Now the requirements um, in terms of application is a class one medical. You must be 17 years of age. 
and some sort of post-secondary diploma is best. Now the application for either program, again, like I was mentioning earlier, runs from January 1st to March 15th, and it starts annually in July. Now just some highlights for the college and the IETPL program. It is up to five days a week in terms of ground school. In the end, we offer about 600 to 750 hours of ground school that starts off with the PPL, the CPL, the IFR, and different advanced courses. Now, the two programs, the college class and the IATPL program, do run concurrently. However, once you reach what would traditionally be the end of the program, the students that are in the IATPL continue on. And what they do is they actually practice two crew operations, and then they move on, and they um, fly simulators down in one of our um, simulator partners closer to Pearson Airport. They also do write those two additional IATPL exams. Now, some additional uh, things to look forward to, let's say, in either the college program or in the IATPL program includes industry tours, tons of networking opportunities. Many of our ground schools are taught by um, uh, airline pilots and other industry professionals. We do uh, intro to instructing, uh, we, expose, we expose our students to all sorts of different aviation-related professions. Um, and one thing that does come in handy later on is we do resume building and a number of mock interviews, again, with some of our industry partners. Now, one thing I did want to point out on this slide is the flying schedule. Because these college programs have so much to do in such a short amount of time, we schedule the students for flying six days a week. As you may recall, ground school is five days a week. Uh, and we do encourage that seventh day for flying, just in case, you know, there's a bad weather day earlier on in the week, you can um, come and fly, say that your, your normal off day is now a nice weather flying day, okay? Now, because of that, because these programs are so intensive, they are effectively full-time jobs. So we do not recommend any part-time jobs on the side. All right, everybody, and that's all I have for you today. So again, I'm just gonna end off with our contact information. If you do have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to Kathy Stewart or Amber McKinney at any time.